this episode, we get the necessary travel documents together before heading to the bustling city of Yangon. We visit the giant golden pagoda and then get started overseeing the final refit of the schooner that we will be taking command of. By far the best smell. And they're oh, beautiful. Yeah. That's very good. Ooh. Oh, well, that works out well. Dead one. Here's home. Shoes off. And this is as far as we'll take you. It's a mess in there. <laughs> So it's breakfast time, and this is our selection. Get the one with the quail eggs. Yeah. So you pick as many as you want of these things. We got all the things. Christy trying to eat a quail egg with chopsticks. I think you can use your fork. Totally acceptable to use your fork. No, I had it in my Well, now you're going to go for the other one. <laughs> Practice. Yeah, Back in the tuk tuk. Tuk tuk rides, Thailand, classic. In order to leave Myanmar um, on a new boat, we need uh, Siemens books. So we attempted to get some Canadian ones, but it actually doesn't matter what country they come from. So we are here um, at a deep sea fishing port, or not fishing, um, yeah to get some Thai Siemens books. So that's kind of exciting. The Canadian ones we will eventually try to get, but they're a long process. So we've got uh, two locals helping us out for the day. We know what they're doing, because we don't. And uh, here we are. Uh, so step one was getting a medical, which we did this morning. He uh, looked at my eyes, looked at my ears, listened to my heart, and my breathing, and uh, put a stamp on it and good to go. So that was step one, and step two is um, we have passport photos, and then we're going to get the official book and fill out the application. Here we go. No shoes, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we're just here filling out our Siemens book documents. Uh, okay, so after one little bit of gear, just a few signatures, go ahead. Um, we're going to get Thai Siemens books. So we've done all the paperwork, we just have to go run and get one more piece of uh, signatures. And then once we come back, those will be officially stamped and our pictures put in them and we're done. <laughs> so here we are at uh, Thai Immigration. Um, it's taken us about two days to get the documents. We uh, needed to get a document that says that we have residency here in Thailand, which we do and we were able to find. So we have these documents which we'll take to another office which will um, get us the Thai Siemens books. It's a learning curve, but we're figuring it out. It looks like our applications just got stacked on the pile. Hopefully we'll have what we need. We finally got them after about two or three days of driving around, many motorcycle rides, several signatures, including all kinds of scrolly rolly signatures, and as you can see, some horrible photographs taken in a small room somewhere. We finally got our Siemens books. Next up will be to go and get our Myanmar visas. That's still a whole nother process that we have to go through. Forms upon forms upon forms. Let me tell you about our day. We woke up this morning and spent over an hour in this office just behind me, waiting in line, waiting for our number to be called. Five minutes at the desk, we leave. And then we went and watched Star Wars, which was pretty cool. And uh, now we are back. So we are in Bangkok, right outside the Myanmar Embassy. And they want to let me in. So here is my business multi-entry visa to Myanmar. I'm going to Burma. See you later, Thailand.
time driving in Myanmar. It's not bad. It's uh, you drive on the right side of the road, which is just like North America, but the steering wheel's on the wrong side. <laughs> so, and I learned today that um, uh, an international driving license kind of works here, and my Canadian one obviously doesn't work here. Uh, but I learned today that if you get caught driving without a license, it's three months in a Myanmar prison. Ew, that wouldn't be very good at all. So that'd be some pretty sweet videos. Life in a Burmese prison. Yeah. Literally, yeah. <laughs> the cultural, political, social exchange. Spiritual culture. Yeah. Anyway. The Shwedagon Pagoda is a wonder of the religious world. At over 100 meters high, it is covered in shiny gold plates, making it an amazing sight to experience. After being out to sea for so long, the people watching was also both interesting and a bit overwhelming. Okay, here it is. First step onto the new boat. It's dark, but there it is. Sailing vessel Dolling Hoo. Oh, there's the wheel. And there she is. Dolling Hoo. Under covers. This is my first look at Dolling Hoo. Not much right now. So I just met uh, Aunt New, the chief mate, and he is one of about 40 people <laughs> on board. They're just like popping out of holes everywhere. <laughs> a lot of them. Yeah. Somebody just stuffed himself into that hole for a little while. Classic, just next working on the end. Oh, there's another guy. <laughs> there's the port double. Granite countertops. Starboard twin. And forward head. Here's the crew quarters. Four berth system for the crew. Over the next couple of videos, I'll try and document all the different parts of the ship that get put back together. Everything from stepping the masts to putting on teak decks to a lot of the metalwork. That way I can document each of the projects as they proceed from when we put the boat back in the water to its final launch and Buddhist blessing. This is the finished helm, as you can see. And so what I thought I'd do is take you through the making of this helm and all the other parts. And we'll just do it in little segments where I show you basically where something was made all the way along from scratch to finish. And I think that'll be an interesting way for you to look at how this boat was put back together. The helm started off as a full-size makeup by the carpenters in the yard to position how big it should be as well as all the electronic equipment that needed to be put aboard. Each piece was then glued together, solid raw teak glued together into form boards and then the boards were assembled into the final product. The metal binnacle had been assembled and all the wiring was run before the final product was put in place.
all the appropriate holes were cut in places that they needed to be, and then the wheel was installed into the gear mechanism. After a final coat of varnish, or more like seven coats of varnish, the helm was finally installed and bolted in place. Finally, the folding cockpit table was made from scratch and bolted to the forward end of the helm. Every day we go to work in an industrial shipyard where our vessel is unique amongst the massive freighters and cargo ships. There are a lot of stray dogs running around the yard. Some are more friendly than others. But one day, a small sickly looking pup who was far too young to be away from her mother turned up at the boat. This is just one of the little dock boat yard dogs. And we're gonna call this one Button because he's sort of the curious case of Benjamin Button with all these wrinkles. He's sort of like prematurely aged. It's so ugly, it's cute. <laughs> Poor little girl. Where's your mom? Yeah, Button. Where's your mommy? You're, you grew up, you came out old. Here's Christy with her new best friend, Button. Each day, Button came back to our little section of the yard. Her friendly yet fearless attitude was her greatest survival skill amongst the yard workers and the yard dogs. We bought her milk each day and began to see healthy, happy changes in her. Next time on Mount Ocean, we continue to show you the ongoing projects of the refit. We have some funny experiences in Yangon. I learned some traditional Myanmar dishes, and we give you an update on Button.